there, teacher. My name is Asia, and I am also known as the Sassy Math Teacher. I'm a seventh grade math teacher who loves creating resources for my own students and to sell online. You've just jumped in on a series. The series is entitled PowerPoint Tips and Tricks for Teachers. So if you have not watched the first two videos in the series, you need to go back and watch them because today we're making a math worksheet. However, we are using the video the second video in order to make it. So you need to start there. So pause this video, go watch number one and number two, then come back to me and we'll get ready to create a math worksheet. Otherwise, if you're ready to go, let's go. So you may notice that this video looks just like the last one. Well, that's because I'm all about not starting from scratch. Work smarter, not harder. So I just duplicated that last slide that we did and I'm going to use it to begin this math worksheet. So I, because I want my border and I want to keep that pencil and I want my title to pretty much be the same. But what I do want to do is select everything except for the border, the title and the pencil that way. I can keep everything else. I'm just gonna delete it, okay? So that deleted all the lines, and now I'm gonna delete my name, okay? Um, We're gonna call this, hmm, let's do addition. Addition, I want it to be all caps again. Addition, practice, fun, fun, fun. Addition practice, okay? So that's gonna be the title, Um, and Let's go ahead and dive in. So say you want your students to practice adding three numbers together. We're gonna start by adding a text box and we're gonna type our three numbers. So maybe it's 15, uh, 10, and nine. Oop, not 69. We don't want not 69 in the classroom. Okay, my middle school teachers understand. Okay, so notice how these are like all justified to the left. I gave each number a new row, but what I do want to do is justify it to the right. And then with this nine, I'm going to add a plus sign. So it's actually the basis of a math problem. Okay. So, <clears throat> so we have that. Now we want to have that little bar underneath. So you can do that in one of two ways. You can either just underline that bottom row to have it, um, or you can physically draw out a line like we learned in the last couple of videos, how to draw lines, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and make this Century Gothic because it's just a good, solid, free font that we can use, all right? So now we have that, um, but say you want it to be you want it to be a little bigger, depending on what grade level you are teaching. You may want it to be a larger font. Depends. Um, but obviously we want more problems on a page. So what we're going to do is simply duplicate this one by doing Command D and then space it out. So you can do it that close or you can do it further apart. I think I'm going to do it about there. And then duplicate again. That way it will do it all the same distance. Okay, and you notice this one over to the right is going a little bit off of the page. That's okay. I'm just going to select all of them. And with the arrows on my keyboard, I'm just going to scoot, 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 scoot. Scoot them over. That looks decent. Okay. Um, obviously, we don't want our students to do the same thing over and over again. So we'll change the numbers in a little bit. But what I am going to do is go ahead and duplicate all. Notice I have all six selected. So we're going to duplicate that again and just drag them about down here and just make sure they are also centered. Okay, that looks good to me. So now you would just go back through there and change all of the numbers to fit your needs, whatever those needs may be, okay? Um, and maybe down here at the bottom, you want something a little more challenging for them. So maybe, <clears throat> I'm gonna add another text box, you want to have something like 15 plus 10 plus, I don't know. So I'm going to do shift with the underscore key and do a line and then equals um, 63. Okay. <laughs> um, or actually 25 plus 9 is 34. So maybe that's what we should do. I would technically do that because it's right there on the page. But anyways, so maybe that's the next thing you wanted to do where you had some questions where they had to fill in the blank. 
So what's missing? Um, but one thing you may want to do is actually separate the two halves of the page. So I'm going to go add a line in just so it's kind of separated. Okay. All right. So the other thing that I didn't mention in the last video is that you need some directions on your paper. Um, actually, let's, before I forget, let's make that Century Gothic. So you do need some directions and you may actually also want some numbers for your paper. That's up to you. So let's go ahead and add in some directions. I'm just, sometimes I start typing to the side so nothing gets mixed up. All right, directions. Complete each addition statement by filling in the missing value. All right, back to my default Century Gothic. It's too big. Okay, make it a little smaller. All right, so those are the directions for the bottom. And then I'm gonna duplicate and just put some directions at the top. Okay. Um, find the solution for each problem. Yeah, that looks good. All right, and then of course, let's see if we can get two of these side by side. Yes, we can. All right, so now we're just going to go ahead and duplicate those at the bottom so we can have a couple like that. Make sure they're lined up. And then, boom, there they are. I'm going to select all of them because I don't like how far. I don't like how far that's going to the edge. Okay. All right, that looks good. I like it. Do you like it? I like it. All right. So there's a math worksheet. You do want to go change your numbers. Um, but that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial. I'll see you in the next one.